guys after I built that bed there on top of the sump I had a lot of questions people wanted to ask me how I built it so it's pretty simple pretty simple this is this is the height the top of this here will be the there'll be a top board just that trim piece tear will be right there too so that's the height it's lower because that one I put higher so I could crawl in you know to uh, get underneath the sump but this will be the height for this one uh, from the ground to the top of here it's 30 inches but I made these boards uh, 42 inches so they're in the ground about 8 inches uh, 8 10 inches they're down and at the bottom I have two because this is hard clay I have two bricks laid on their side and that's on top of that and then it's on top and then this was the first one I put in and I got uh, attached a string to the top and I used a string level to get the four corners the top level with this so I strung that one then I did that one then that one then that one and then I put the outside runners on and then all the runners on then I added those last the last thing I dug down uh, put it in leveled it up and screwed it on and what I did here is I got joist hangers on so you want to put these two on last and I'll show you why because that's right in the center and I got them every foot except here there's a little shorter gap I just spaced these even the last two because it was more than a foot uh, and you can see on the outside I screwed in once there so they're in pretty taut they got the joist hanger plus the screw on the outside so this is in here and last night I was walking across this so this is this is pretty stout so it ain't going anywhere so when I get to the next step I'll show you that too just thought I would uh, pass this on you'll see uh, the beginning of the beds I don't know when I'm gonna get to the next step it might be a few days but uh, you guys will get the videos as soon as I do it thought I'd pass this on okay next step just put the bottom on it's four foot wide so I didn't have to cut that just cut the length and then cut the sides to fit that's it next thing I'll do is I'll put the two by four trim pieces on around just to help the from doing this the outside it can flex with the weight so you just put some trim on there just to help keep that from doing that other than that this is the next step okay next step I got the sides and everything on and the trim pieces see the trims on like I said the support these trim here and here all of those really do is keep that board from bowing like this uh, structurally it's really not doing much except that uh, the bottom's holding almost all the weight. The sides do have a little weight, yes, but the side beams kind of hold that and the board here kind of holds that from doing much. So this is the next step. Uh, just going to start doing that stain and paint the same color as that right now. And after that's in, we'll drill the hole and then start lining it. So I just thought I'd pass this on. I told you I'd... Uh, tell you how I built this as I went so this is it so far okay guys just got done staining it this is the prime stain ultimate I showed when I did that one go back to that one and you'll see what it is it's all in one one coat does a good job I did one coat on that one and it's fine uh, so that's it here I'll go over here so you can see this side too so I pulled around away so I stained and then I'll push the dirt back a little bit so that's it now I'll just uh, line it inside there I'll get back to you and that's okay, done. next step what you want to do is after you get her in you get ready to line it you want to cut your hole you know for your drain kit okay uh, you want it the hole obviously bigger than this but smaller than this and it just sits in there like that so that is you want as small a hole as you can get okay you don't want much movement this is a little bigger than I like but I didn't want to spend another 10 bucks or 15 bucks on another hole saw so but one thing you want to do is make sure it's perfectly clean in here uh, I cleaned it out then I actually got my 
blower out, leaf blower out to blow in there to make sure everything was out. Take your liner, center it. Now this is the one I used on that one too, I cut it in half. So you center it on this and then you tuck the corners in and I'll show you how to tuck the corners in a minute. But what I'm doing is I'm dual layering it. I'm putting a palm liner down, then on top of that I'm putting a used billboard. You can, get a, you can use one and you're fine. The reason I'm using two is just so over time, you know how you can have condensation on the other side of plastic or anything from, you know, the hot on one side, cold on the other from the water? Uh, I did not want that, so I'm doing two. So the condensation should, because that one's going on top, should be between that and that, just to help this last a lot longer. But odds are you could probably get away with one, so. That's it, what I'll do is I will show you how I uh, tuck a corner in when I do this, if I remember. But uh, if not, I'll show you exactly when I'm done. Uh, how to, because there's a special way you want to tuck the corner to make sure you don't get solids trapped in a certain area. So that's it. I'll show you in a little bit what the next step is. Okay, the first thing I do with the tarp is, after I center it, I tuck it down tight right here and put like five staples up here. Then I smooth it, tuck it in here and up and wrap it and put five here in the center. Halfway between there and there and there and there. Make sure you tuck it down both before you pull it over so you don't, you know, have a wave in there. Then I do the same on this side. I make sure it's centered. I take it up and over and staple it down halfway this way. Tuck it down, over, up, and do that over there. Tuck it over there. That way I know the centers are held in tight. Uh, and I just use... Uh, you could just use a little hand stapler. I happen to have a roofing stapler like this. You know, the kind you just go pop, pop. That makes it a lot easier. I just use that. And then I start in on the corners. First thing you know to do is in the corner is tuck it, tuck it tight both ways. And then the, all the excess that's up, you cut from the corner out. Uh, then you can start folding. So I'll show you that after I get it going. So that's it. See you guys a little okay, bit. Okay, here's what I was talking about you want to do in every corner. After you get it roughly, you cut it from top all the way from the inside corner here all the way out to the corner of the plastic. You, you smooth the side and you tuck that underneath. Do you see how this fold? It's folded where the gap's under this way. You want it that way. You don't want it like this so there's the hole on top. Uh, what I'm talking about is right here, see how the pocket's like this? You don't want the pocket on top. You don't want solids to be there and then trap down inside. This way solids really don't get trapped up and go up there, but they'll just come back down right away. So that's it. That's how you do every corner. Just do all four like this. Uh, just make sure you tighten the sides best you can. Little tiny wrinkles are fine. That's not going to hurt anything. But... Uh, that's it, that's all you do. After I do this one, uh, then I'll put the billboard top on and I'll do that one too. So after I get, uh, I'll do an eight of these corners, I got the one done. I got three on this tarp and four on the other tarp and I'll come back and show you the finished product. Okay, this is what it looks like when all four are done. And if you were just doing one at this point, your, your hole you drilled, you find it, see there's the hole cut a small X in there, put it in. So what I do is I also, after it's in and it's tight, I put some food grade silicone around it, real good, just to make sure there's no hairline leaks. Uh, it might be overkill, but better overkill, but yep, you just do all four corners. Now I come back. This side I really don't have to trim much, just there. I just take my knife and just cut it right on top here, right on the, see here's the board right on the top part, right towards the edge, because when that trim goes on, covers all that up, makes it look real neat. But that's it. Now I just do the other one. That's it. Now I'll show you when okay, that's done. Okay, it's done. You can see here. Got the corners done. And little wrinkles will flatten out. I got the bulkhead fitting in and the food grade silicone. Make sure you get food grade. Uh, that's important, food grade silicone. So, do I have to do that? Probably not. Just feel better against the hairline leaks. Uh, 
That little tube is like $2. And it's a really, really small tube and I just throw it out when I'm done because I use over half of it. That way I don't have to worry about keeping a big tube around. But that's it. And then in here I'll screw in a one and a half inch fitting to a straight stamp height. And we're good to go. So that's it. Next thing I do is I wait two, three hours. This, this has a, a two hour dry time against wet, uh, six hour for mold. So I'll just wait two, four hours and I'll give it a wet test. So that's it. Talk okay, later. while I'm waiting for the silicone to dry, I put the trim on. And the trim is flush here and flush here. The reason is, this could be both a floating raft bed or a flood and drain. Just regular bell siphon, flood and drain. But if that's my out, if I put a little elbow over to the corner and up to the height I want the water, water can drain out, then the inflow can just be my inlet pipe. So this can be a floating bed or drain and fill if you put your trim boards level. So a little extra work right now is makes it dual purpose. So now that the trim pieces are on, that way if it's smooth, you can get the styrofoam in and out super, super easy. And you can cut them right to fit so there's no gaps. So there's no chance of uh, light getting in for algae. So that's it. Now I'll just uh, put that stain on that stuff again. You can cut these then stain them, but I just put them on and I'll stain it right here. So it's not that big a deal. So that's it. I'll show you the next step when I get okay, there. Okay guys, the bed is done. I'll show you what I did since I last videotaped. This stuff you really didn't have to see how I was doing. Uh, drain pipe right here. It's a four inch PVC sewer, light grade. I have it going and I'll extend it for the other beds. It comes in, goes through the wall and down. It only goes down about three, four inches past this wood to make a lot of splashing. And when I put the pipe down for that big PVC there, that's the drain to the bell siphon for this bed. There's a lot of splash, I was getting a little leak bounce up, so I just put some little silicone, and I attached the silicone to the pipe, to the, I should say, the vertical pipe, not the horizontal, so I can actually lift it up and out. That was just to kind of make a, a rubber seal around it, for lack of better terms. And I did the same thing down there. Now, I spliced uh, the water, I brought it down and through, and up to this bed, and over there. The two things I did different on this bed is one, I drilled out a little hole to make it smooth. You can see here how this kind of goes up and over and it's kind of at an angle right here. Uh, I cut a little hole in here, let me show you. You know, and I'll go back and I'll stain that just to make it a lot more clean cut. And then halfway over, I teed it off and brought it up and over and put a little 15 foot hose. This hose is gonna be for this and this bed. It takes water from the pump, right from the water going to the beds. So it's, I'm not using new water. If you remember another video I did is, even though we're locked off, greens everywhere, you can get little white flies and little, you know, stuff like that in here. You could just use a bucket of water on it. Uh, let me see, I think I zoomed in folks. I apologize about that. I'm sorry. But what I did was, if I do that, if I turn this bed off and this bed off temporarily, I can turn that hose on, there's enough pressure where I can spray the stuff off without getting a bucket or just to make it easy. And this will be for these two beds. And when I make the last two, I'll do one in between them two also, just to make stuff easier. Uh, remember when you fill these beads up, the easiest thing to do is, so you know your level, I said this before in another video, but I'll say it again, is take your bell siphon out. Okay, take it out completely. Keep your shroud on, and then I put a cinder block on top to keep it weighted. Start filling it up with water. Start filling the beads up, okay? And once the beads get, you get about three quarters full, don't put any more beads. Wait till the water is, let's do this, spilling over into there, because that'll be a constant height. That's your high water point, and you want your beads two inches above that, okay? 
So what you do is, once that water is constant, you can turn that water off. Add beads until you're two inches above the wet, wet mark. Put the shroud on and start cycling it, and you might have to add a little here and there. So, and that is the easiest way. I hope that makes sense, because then you know your water line. Uh, you don't want to add your beads first, you want to add your water first because of all the displacement of one or the other. So add about three quarter beads, turn the water on, and then just keep adding until they're two inches above the wet. So that's it, that's all there is to do it. But that's it, this bed is now complete. So, uh, and that's not glued on right here. Uh, I just, I had this so I capped it up. This is an inch and a half higher than that side so it flows that way I shouldn't get any back but just in case I elbowed it and capped it because that's what I had uh, just to make sure and keep dirt and dust and everything out of there because I'll be extending that down here but that's it that's this bed that is how you make uh, this this type of grow bread that I made right here uh, it's not hard it's it's a little time consuming but not a lot time consuming so that's it i hope everybody enjoyed this video uh if you like it please subscribe i also created a facebook page for my aquaponic farms if you guys i would love you guys to go well uh, like that page so i can get some more likes on it it's north texas aquaponics north texas aquaponics i would love you guys to go like that page for me so i can get uh, get the page count up a little bit that's it everybody have a great day